bringing in Republican Senator Tom Cotton out of Arkansas. Senator, nice to see you again, and good morning to you in Washington. Well, what's the chance that the morning, Chinese government ever concedes to this? I, I would suggest zero. Huh. And, and if that is the case, what is this administration willing to do to make China pay for it? Yeah, I think, Bill, you're right that China, uh, China chances of ever conceding that they're responsible for this virus is zero. Uh, but that new report from the Lawrence Livermore Lab just confirms what I've been saying from the very beginning. Just use your common sense. This virus emerged mm -hmm. in a city larger than New York, just a few blocks down the road from the lab where they research these viruses. Every bit of evidence we have points to those labs. And it's past time to hold China accountable for their negligence and their deceitfulness in unleashing this plague on the world. There's lots of things we could do. We could revoke their permanent most favored nation status, a bad mistake that we made 20 years ago. We could team up with our allies and take back the very favorable financing terms they get from international financial institutions like the World Bank. We could take away visas from Chinese Communist Party members and their kids so they can't send their kids to American schools anymore. Uh, there's no end to the things we can do to make China pay for unleashing this plague, and we should start right now. Betsy uh, McKay over at the New York Post wrote this today, that Biden needs to make China pay for its <laughs> actions over COVID, <laughs> saying that Biden should be leading a multinational effort to isolate China, get answers, and demand reparations. So he's got an opportunity because tomorrow on Wednesday, he leaves to go and meet uh, with the EU countries. And some of them are not necessarily on board with holding China accountable, but that might be the best place to start. Yeah, that'd be a great place to start, Dana. He's going to be meeting with our allies in Europe. A lot of them have economic interests uh, tied up in China. But also Europe is starting to get tired of China as well. You know, they signed a trade deal with China at the end of last year. Uh, they've stopped the implementation of it, in part because of China, China's gross human rights abuses against its own people. So this really is a ripe time to bring our allies along with us in isolating China and imposing real consequences on them for unleashing this plague on the world. Senator, I want to take you back in time about a year and a half. Here's a series of uh, media takes going after you. You were quite public on the possibility of this early on. Just listen to this and a very specific question for you to follow. Watch. Senator Tom Cotton suggested that the virus may have come from China's biological warfare program. It's very dangerous to stir up suspicion, rumors, and spread them among the people. Cotton has been criticized by public health professionals for giving just the whiff of credibility there on television and on social media to a conspiracy theory. So that is February of 2020. What day did you go public and why? Where were you getting your information that might lead you to suggest that this was a lab leak very early on? I mean, Bill, I just use common sense. I, I mean, the China, uh, Chinese Communist Party pointed to an open-air food market uh, as the origin of this virus, but they didn't even sell bats in that market. Early reports from well-respected um, scientific journals said that there were more people who got the virus with no contact with that market than who got it with contact with that market. And as I've said, this virus didn't emerge in some remote rural village in a mountain next to a cave full of bats. It emerged in a city larger than New York. Mm -hmm. just down the road from labs where we know that they were conducting very dangerous research into coronaviruses. So all of the spin you just heard from uh, uh, reporters and journalists on other networks uh, was just partly because it was coming from me. It's partly because all those networks are owned by or affiliated with big Hollywood studios who want access to the Chinese market. So they're deeply in the pocket of the Chinese Communist Party. I was intrigued by something you said about what we could do to the Chinese in terms of making them pay for something. And one of them was about not allowing their children to study here in American universities. Because that, that obviously is a covenant they want, to, they want to come here. And a lot of these universities want the Chinese to come here because they pay full freight out-of-state tuition. But is that something you think you might be able to get some traction on? We should. Uh, why should we be subsidizing uh, America's higher education institutions when they turn around and accept the princeling kids of all these Chinese communists? Because that's the reality of it. Most people who come here in America are well-connected in China. Now, I'm not saying necessarily they're the ch kids of the senior leaders of China, although those come too. But any local communist apparatchik has a much better mm -hmm. chance of sending their kids to study at our universities or our private high schools. That's something they really want. And if, that's, if we cut off visas for those Chinese communist officials and their family members, that will impose real consequences on them for what they've done to the world. That's interesting. Thank you.
Tom Cotton, we'll talk again. Thanks for your time today. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.